Now, Double Line Capital Deputy Chief Investment Officer Jeff Sherman. Um, J Jeff, where is the primary interest that you're seeing from, from your clients in terms of where, where in bonds, where in credit? Yeah, I think, as, as you mentioned, too, it's that up in quality credit trade at this point, because uh, as we've seen, you, you just showed the flow data. You're also seeing some kind of weaker performance as of late in the riskier segments of the bond market. And I think it's just that nervousness, too, about higher yields, higher financing costs, and just, again, the, the future path of the economy. But uh, as Mike pointed out at the top of the show here, uh, what we've seen is really just stronger economic data. Now, this does not portend that, you know, we're in this new bull market and this new great regime of greater growth. But what it is is kind of a rebalancing of some of that negativity we were seeing from a lot of the December data. And so if you go back and look through the December data, it, it's very rare that you see things like retail sales, uh, you know, uh, go down month over month in, in a month like December. We got scared by the services number two months ago. Right when we got that January number off the December data that was very low. And so I think the bond market got a little too negative uh, at the beginning of January because these were the holdouts of the last parts of the economy that were still performing quite well. Talking about the consumer, uh, talking about just the service sector in general. And so uh, it's not just the headline number that I saw in the services data today, but it's also the employment side of it too. You've seen mm -hmm. the job creation on this side, and although they are Kind of lower end jobs. I think what you're seeing is finally getting this restocking back of the employee stock in the services uh, sector of the market today. And so if you think about what happened over the last 18 to 24 months, companies and small businesses were very reticent to be able to rehire and, and, and just get back into where they were pre-pandemic. I think some of this job creation we've seen is on that side. Now, we all know, uh, and we all know that the, the labor market is the last shoe to drop, as they say, uh, in, in the, in the uh, economic data set. But thus far, I think what we're seeing is that a resiliency there does not mean that we're going to stay resilient throughout the rest of the year. But as you mentioned, too, bond yields are very attractive for where we are in this market today. T-bills, as you guys are talking about, north of 5 percent. You have the 10-year Treasury at 4 percent as well. And these are yields that we haven't seen in the bond market in, in over 12 or 13 years. And so we think that there's that natural attrition to, or the natural rotation back into the bond market after such a rough year. And it really just comes down to bond math. If you can buy bonds that are like 80 cents of the dollar, you can underwrite the credit, you feel comfortable about it, they will naturally go back to par over maturity. And so this is not just some rebound trade. It's good old-fashioned bond work. Jeff, I'm wondering if you are in the, uh, the no landing camp. Um, the no landing camp is out there. Um, and it sounds almost ridiculous when you're, when you're thinking about all of the, the Fed rate hikes still in the pipe that have yet to take effect on the economy. Um, or is it that we are just simply in Goldilocks right now because they haven't fully taken effect, but we will be hit and we'll be hit, hit hard down the line? Well, Melissa, you stole my thunder right there, because I think the no landing scenario is just is utter optimism. And I think, you know, at this stage, it's hard to say what kind of landing we have. Is it soft? Is it hard? But I think you nailed it right there. We have not really seen the effects of the Fed hikes in the economy. Yes, it's hit the housing market. Um, we have seen some challenges in some of the floating rate sectors uh, like bank loans. They're starting to see a little bit more challenges. But if you think about how corporate America refinanced over the last three years, um, the coupons are low on this, so the interest coverage is relatively high. And so typically in a Fed hiking regime, if it's prolonged, um, instead of being so short and high that we've seen the, the, the rate hikes being so rapid, it takes uh, that, that usually kind of leaks into the economy. But uh, if you think about the debt markets, a lot of people haven't had to refi at these higher levels. Same portends for the consumer as well. So I, I think right now that we're in this area where the data is OK, uh, it's surprising to the upside. People are saying, oh, this is great. It's the set of the next bull market. But what I think it is is that we still haven't seen that. So I think these effects are going to come to the back half of the year. That's why we've been in the camp that the Fed will still hike, although they should not be hiking anymore. They should wait for these hikes to kind of trickle into the system. But unfortunately, the data set they're looking at means that they're going to hike at least another 50 to 75 basis points. And I don't think that that matters in the short term, but we're going to have to see what the effects are as we go into the back half of this year and early next year. And I think that's where you're going to start to see the challenges. And so the reason that we're advocating for you know investors to think about bond portfolios and have higher quality, have things that can, can perform in a down market, things like treasuries, things that uh, do, do perform well when the economy slows, is that you don't buy insurance in the middle of the storm, you buy it beforehand. 
And so we think that, you know, the recession is getting pushed out a little bit this year. It probably is something that could materialize early next year. But we think at yeah. this point, uh, having some of that insurance is very important.